Hi. Today we're going to make a retro apron. The first thing you want to do is launder your material, wash it so that it's going to shrink, any that's going to shrink before you sew it, and then you want to press it. Okay, the pattern that, the apron that I'm making today is going to be a Christmas gift, and I actually made this from a book I found, and this, this is the apron I'm going to make, the one that looks pink, but this is the fabric I'm going to use. And I, that's the coordinating fabric that I'm using for this. Peace, man. This is going to be the next apron that I make, and it happens to have three different fabrics, but you want your fabrics to coordinate. Anyway, two totally different looks, obviously. This one will eventually become my sister Vivian's apron. I think she will hop around the, the kitchen in this one. Okay, now I'm going to lay out my pattern and uh, start cutting. This particular book I bought for the retro aprons, you trace out the pattern size that you want. This is kind of nice because then you could put your patterns in a little manila envelope and have it ready for the next time, whether it's a large, medium, or small. So, I am going to cut this out and then move this pattern down the material and cut a second piece. This is going to be the front of the apron and the lining. It's both the same. You, I could have got coordinating fabric for the lining, but I kind of liked having the piece signs on both sides. You know, because it's groovy, man. I've got one piece cut out. Now I'm going to move the pattern down, cut the second part, or the lining of the apron. yourself in the finger with the pen. Another tip that I'll give you along the way is always have a good pair of scissors and label those scissors or mark them somehow or let everybody know that they can never use these scissors for anything or you will have to give it to them. Okay? You got to have a good sharp pair of scissors. that's like one and a half inches by seven. Um, that's going to be the little loops on the side that will hold the ties. So let's measure seven. First, I'm going to mark the one and a half inches. Now I will mark the seven inches.
Okay, now I'm going to cut it out. I only need one of these. And this one piece will actually be cut in half once I sew it and become the two ties. Okay, now I'm going to mark the location of the two darts on both the front and the lining. And when you put the darts in, it gives the apron a more tapered look. It looks a little more professional. But of course, we're going for groovy. On the pattern, it shows you where to mark for the darts. So, I already have little holes there. And I've got my trusty little marking pencil. So let me make some marks. Once the darts are marked, you're pretty much done with this section of the pattern. So, fold this up, get it out of the road, and it's still perfectly good for the next time you make this particular pattern. Now, if you recall, the material was like this when I pressed it, and it made me press a crease there. I don't need that crease anymore so I want to iron it out before I get the sewing it's easier to do it now especially because of the ruffles that we'll be adding to this when we start sewing it up so Okay, now I'm going to mark out several strips two and a half inches wide. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm actually going to cut seven full length widths of my material uh, two and a half inches wide. And I've got my trusty little marking pen here. Marking pencil. strips. Ooh, I better turn my iron on because again, 
I'll need to iron out my crease. This guy in the background, this is my husband, he was so excited about me making this apron that it exhausted him. He fell asleep. Okay, now we will sew the darts. Okay, there are a few steps involved in making the ruffle. The first step, of course, is just cutting the strip. The second step is to sew the edges in, and I just kind of roll it in with my finger and sew along. The third step is to put a, like a basting stitch right down the middle. Eventually, and I, I'll just show you this, I leave long threads. I don't know if you can see that actually. But I leave long threads because I will eventually pull those threads to gather this up and I'll show you that step in just a moment. Okay, I'm putting the ruffle on now on the top and what you do is you put the base stitch in and then you pull Pull the threads so that you gather it up. This side I haven't done yet, but I'm getting ready to do that. Apron's looking good. Okay, one last ruffle to uh, sew on, and you can see I kind of improvised a pocket to add to this apron. So, that way if my sister wants to put a spoon in there or some seasonings. She's got a pocket to do that. So one more ruffle, then I'll place the pocket and then this apron will be done. Okay, the apron is done. I made that impromptu pocket, so that'd be nice. I changed the design a little bit, which, you know, you can do that if it doesn't seem to work out for you. Change it to a way that will work out better. So anyway, there's that apron. Boy, that, that, that thing's bright. <laughs> oh, peace, man. There we go. Here are a few other aprons that I've made this uh, 
holiday season. This one's kind of cute. It's got a curved front. And I combine some stripes with some polka dots. Again, always think about coordinating your materials. They don't have to be exactly the same, obviously, but you want them, the colors, to go together, etc. back of this one is kind of cute, but I found that this type of a back is a little more challenging to put the apron on, which is why I changed the pattern on the one you saw before this. Now here we used a flower, print, and polka dot. Okay, here is a guy's apron. I like the pocket on this one. You can hold some hot sauce, seasoning, something else. Anyway, three three places and that big pocket for him to do his barbecue and I just love the pattern on this this one is not done yet but I just love the material on this one too These will uh, become the ruffles, add some color, and I've got some ideas for a pocket. I'm not sure how close I can get, but here is the label that I made to put uh, just inside the, the breast of the aprons. Anyway. I hope uh, I hope you like the aprons for all of you that receive them. And until next Christmas, be nice.